I grew up in northern Delaware, a few miles from President Biden's house. If you know what the suburbs far outside of New York or Washington, D.C. look like, that's the general idea. Classic four seasons, pretty rainy. In the summer, the landscape is very, very green compared to California. I spent much of my summers in that nature and humidity. I played tennis, went to day camp at state parks, and mountain biked. Every year, about 10 families from my Unitarian Universalist church would take a long weekend camping together in the Poconos Mountains north of Philadelphia. We would enjoy nature and the power of water in all of its forms. We swam in the lake, went whitewater rafting down a nearby river, and inevitably we would experience pouring rain at least one evening of the trip. We would huddle under tarps and canopies, playing card games, and run to the bathhouse when a moment of lighter rain came. One of my earliest childhood memories is when I was four, waking up in the middle of the night to a flooded tent. We were one of the last families to arrive, and so we had last pick of campsites, and it turned out that if it rained hard enough, water would drain right through our tent. And I have many fond memories of enjoying an unusual degree of freedom for my age, those weekends in the wooded mountains. All of the kids would travel in a pack, with the older kids adding some degree of responsibility to the mix. And we could wander down to the lake without our parents, swimming under the watch of lifeguards, and playing frisbee on the beach after it closed. In a decade living with the Bay Area's lack of significant seasonal change, I really didn't miss the East Coast. I was happy to trade the novelty of a new season for easy access to both hills and ocean, and I appreciate being able to walk or take the bus wherever I go without having to deal with weather worse than the occasional rainstorm. But when the pandemic hit last year, the lure of the East Coast slowly grew. Originally, we had the thought that my partner and I should move across town to afford a bigger place than the one bedroom apartment that we were now spending all of our time in. Then we had the passing fancy of what if we moved back to Delaware, but we dismissed it until we came back around and ended up making it happen, moving back into those same woods where I grew up. And it was lovely. We lived in Delaware through every season, starting with the humidity of the end of last summer, through the yellows and oranges of fall, followed by the chill and occasional snow of mid-Atlantic winter, and then the glory of spring. We relearned how warm 50 degrees and sunny can feel when it's early March. I don't think of myself as someone with a deep spiritual connection to nature. And I feel very at home in San Francisco after my decade here. But there was something very comforting about being back in those woods re-immersed in the climate and landscape where I lived my first 18 years. In such an uncertain time, the feel of the rhythm of the seasons was comforting and familiar. And when the world around me was so dynamic, the feel of the air changing, the color of the leaves progressing, the snow slowly melting, the plants re-emerging in spring. It encouraged me to be mindful as I took my dog out for walks. 
there was always something new to notice. Now, I am back in San Francisco, experiencing my first California autumn since 2019. And I am once again appreciating the novelty and the feel of this season in my new home. I never used to think of autumn being a season in San Francisco, but the abrupt shift from Monday's heat to Tuesday's cool weather felt autumnal. And once again, the novelty is prompting me to be mindful of the little details of how the air feels and how the sunlight looks. As I rebuild my San Francisco habits in this new and uncertain world, I am once again finding comfort and an increased feeling of settling in as I ride the waves of the seasons.